We are in the IBM Storewise and we are going to configure a volume that can be used uh, by clustering. So we're going to create a cluster with two 2012 R2 servers and we need to create a volume that will work with that cluster. So as you can see we have 12 2 terabyte drives and we are in the pools internal storage. So if you go over to the left hand side and you find pools you click on internal storage then we have the option to configure the internal storage. Now we've already created the pool earlier and there's a different video on that if you need to see that. Just go ahead and click on the playlist and you'll find that one. So we can use the recommended configuration or select a different one. We're going to create, uh, select a different one. We're going to choose RAID 6. It will allow us to also have a spare drive which is nice. And we're going to optimize for capacity so we're going to use 11 drives for that. And the 12th drive will be used as uh, a failover drive. So we have an option now we can expand an existing pool or create one or more new pools. Well we've already created a pool so let's go ahead and expand on that one that we already have. And we're going to go ahead and highlight that particular pool and then click finish. And now it's creating the RAID array. All right, it says it's all done, so we'll go ahead and click Close. And now we need to create a volume. So now that we have our pool, we have our M disk, which is our managed disk or RAID. Uh, now we can go ahead and create a volume. So let's go ahead and click on the Volumes by Pool. And we can see that there is nothing in there so far. So we'll click on Volumes and then Volumes. And we'll click on New Volume. And we're going to choose a generic one. A thin provision uh, on both of these is really used sort of as a dynamic memory where it expands as you need to. We're not going to do that. Mirror obviously uh, cuts your space in half, which we're not going to do, but it does give you extra, extra redundancy. We've already got a RAID, so we don't feel we need that. All right, so if we click on generic, we see the 16.27 terabytes. We're going to use 16 of those, and I'll show you why. So if we're going to call this one uh, volume one and we're going to choose from gigabytes to terabytes and we can use up to 16.27 well here's one of the flaws in the programming here so if I type in 16.27 it says my period here is uh, not a valid figure so we can't we literally cannot create a 16.27 terabyte if we try just to do 1627 under gigabytes we also get an error so best thing to do is just to go ahead and create the 16 terabytes and then we can expand the volume later if we decide we want that extra 0.27 <clears throat> all right so let's go ahead and click create and this could take some time it depends on how big it is and how fast and new your device is this one actually was very quick so now we have our 16 terabyte pool. Next thing to do is to go ahead and add hosts. So once we add the hosts, then we can map that to the hosts. So we're going to click on new host. And we're doing iSCSI hosts. And we're going to name the new server Hyper-V1 because that's what we're going to be creating as a clustered Hyper-V. And when you go in to paste the iSCSI ports, here's another problem with the IBM documentation. It says to add in the IP address, but that's not what you do. If you do that, it will fail. So what you got to do is you got to go to Server Manager. And from Server Manager, you need to go into iSCSI Initiator. And in iSCSI Initiator, first what we're going to do is we're going to put in the IP address of our... Uh, of our particular IBM store wise and we'll click on quick connect and it finds it which is great and then we're going to go over to configuration and we're going to copy our initiator name alright so we'll go ahead and click copy that click OK and we're going to go in and paste that into there click add port to list and here we can exit out if we decide we made a mistake, but we're fine. We're going to leave it as generic. Click Create Host. It's going to create it. And now it says something interesting over here, degraded. That's okay, because it's just because we haven't mapped it to anything. Now we need to do the same thing with our second server. So I'll go ahead and fast forward by doing all those same steps again in the second server, and then we'll paste in the second host. All right, one of the other things that you want to do before 
uh, you connect everything up is you want to install the multipath because we have multiple iSCSI ports on here and you have to go to features add roles and features wizard and then when you find multipath in the list then you'll go ahead and check that multipath IO and that way we can communicate with multiple different controllers iSCSI controllers instead of just one at a time. Now our iSCSI controller has two of them and each controller has two ports so the only way to get multipath to work uh, in the case of a failure of one of the ports is you've got to install that as one of the features. Once that's installed we can add our second host and we do that on both of our servers that we're going to be clustering and then we move forward. Alright we've got our second host got the uh, iSCSI ID, we click create host Task is complete. All right, now we have our two Hyper-Vs in here. So now we want to add the storage for that. So now we want to go to our pools and volumes by pool, which you just go there, volumes by pool. And we can see our volume is here. So now we want to click on actions and we want to map to host. All right, so we can choose a host, Hyper-V1, and it's now mapped. Click apply. All right. We will now choose Hyper V2. And we will apply. So it does give you a warning. If a volume is mapped to multiple hosts, the host must coordinate access to avoid corrupting data. Map all volumes. So it just means that we have to have cluster services installed on both servers in order for uh, the servers to not crash into each other. All right, so now our IBM uh, StoreWise part is all set, and we can go ahead and go into the iSCSI side of things, and we can see our drives, and we can go ahead and initialize the disk, and we can start the clustering process.